Thank you, Erilyn. I would like to welcome up our next presenter, Makoa Pasco, who will be talking about octopus habits. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Makoa Pasco, and I'm an undergraduate student at um, Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Pasco and I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Hilo. Today I'll be covering temporal and habitual observations of octopus cyana using a stationary remote operated camera. Octopus are intelligent creatures that utilize a wide variety of habits that can be influenced based off of prior experience. In my study, I will be covering some of the observed habits that I've seen, which are mating, hunting, camouflaging, swimming, and most recently, punching. <laughs> Uh, data on octopus behavior within their natural habitats are very limited. Uh, this is because uh, typically octopus are studied within labs or aquarium environments. Uh, in addition to this, snorkel surveys are typically harder to um, identify octopus being as they're able to camouflage and hide within their environment. So with the, remote, with, with the use of a remote operated camera or the Megalab live stream, we are able to collect this data more efficiently. Um, this camera uh, runs live for 24 hours a day, and since installation, it has gained a following of trusted viewers who have actually uh, helped in collecting data, not only just for octopus, but other species as well. Um, this camera allows for a less invasive way to survey octopus species, being as there is no human interference, and it allows them to be more comfortable and exhibit habits that typically they wouldn't. Here's a video of uh, a typical, not your typical actually, this is kind of a rare scene, but this is one of our clips from the Megalab highlights where two octopus are mating. Um, this is really interesting because it's not something that you typically get to see when you're out snorkeling. Um, as you can see, we have one up front and one in the back. Um, what's really cool about the Megalab camera is that, you know, you get to see a wide variety of species, not just octopus. And so we get to see things like uh, sharks and um, sea turtles, and even uh, monk seals. And so it allows us to kind of peer into what um, a marine ecosystem might look like from day to day. And now we're back to the ending part of these two octopus. So another part of my study is that I'll be incorporating mo olelo. Um, this olelo no eao pua keko kukahe'e is, it is octopus season with the sugarcane tassels. Um, it should also be noted that um, ancient Hawaiians would uh, begin to spear octopus in the months of ho'o'ilo, and that moon phases typically played a role in uh, fishing events and kind of like um, advising people when um, it's unproductive or not. Um, ole moon phases typically tend to be unproductive, and they're kind of like, I don't know if you can see, it's like ole, ole, kula, lua. Um, these moon phases typically are unproductive and are times of rest. For my hypothesis, um, I hypothesize that there would be an increase in observations of octopus cyana starting within the late summer going into midwinter months. Um, the objectives were to find when an octopus are most frequently observed on the Megalab live stream feed. Uh, to temp temporally analyze the frequency of observations and exhibited behaviors using Hawaiian moon phases, and compare the findings of Hawaiian mo'olelo to see if there are any commonalities or differences. The camera is located off Keohole Point. Um, it's about 200 feet off the Kona coast and 20 feet deep. Uh, it was originally installed in 2019, and data collection started around 2020. The data set that I'm using for my study uh, goes from 2020 to current. So methods using the remote operated camera is uh, connecting with the community live stream that watches the camera frequently. Um, the community is super helpful as they take clips of uh, daily videos of the certain species that go by because they're super interested in that. And they also have their ongoing list of things that they see. This is helpful because I get to look at that list and confirm these observations and go back on the live stream being as it's a 24 hour live stream. 
I get to go back and look at these observations and confirm if, yes, they saw an octopus and what they were doing during that time. Um, as for recording daily observations, uh, I, I categorize an observation as when an octopus enters the camera, exhibits a trait, and then leaves the camera. This means that we could possibly be seeing an octopus, the same octopus exhibit the trait. Um, and that means, yeah, so basically, if an octopus is around in one day, we might be seeing the same octopus do different traits. Cleaning and uptake of the camera, that just means I'm going out there, I'm diving, being as it's so close to shore, I just go in there and free dive the camera, wipe the dome, and ensure that the video quality that we're getting is clear and concise so that we know what we're looking at is an octopus. For my statistical analysis, I would run chi-square analysis observing compared observations by months and Hawaiian moon phases. I also analyze patterns and observe habits and exhibit what species octopus are interacting with. So this graph here shows um, all of the months on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have the number of observ observed octopus. This is interesting because it shows that January, August, and December were the months that were most statistically, statistically significantly different than the rest of the months. This kind of coincides with the Olelo Noyao that I had previously stated where um, octopus are out during the sugarcane castling seasons. Um, this graph shows all of the different moon phases across the number of oct octopus observed. Uh, this was interesting because there was actually little variation to um, Ob ob observations across moon phases. I was expecting there to be a trend here. However, with more data collection, I believe that we could see um, a difference. So octopus are swimming. Um, this is interesting because uh, we have, well, well, first let me explain the graph. We have habits on the x-axis and observed behaviors, the count of observed behaviors on the y-axis. So here we have swimming, that's octopus going from point A to point B in the water column. Mating, that's when octopus, you know, they get together and shake hands. And then we have sitting when, that's when an octopus is just perched up on a coral. This is an interesting habit that we've been seeing on the camera where they're just sitting out in the open. Um, crawling, similar to swimming, except they're not in the water column. They're just going from A to B on the floor. Hunting, um, this is typically observed when an octopus is um, actively searching a crevice, looking through a coral. Um, it also should be noted that fish are actively swimming around an octopus when it is hunting. This is typically because they're opportunistic feeders. Um, we have digging. This is when octopus are, they're in their hole, they're moving sand, they're, they're lifting rubble. Inking, defense mechanism, um, where they shoot ink out when they're scared. Color change, this was interesting. We've also been seeing octopus sit on the coral reef and where they're just flashing different colors. Um, not necessarily to hide, but I think maybe to for some other um, reason. And then we have punching. This is super interesting. Um, as I previously stated, uh, there are different fish that are swimming around octopus. And sometimes octopus will punch another fish to reposition them to help them in their, their efforts of hunting or just because they're frustrated with the common occurrence. Um, swimming and mating are two of the highest observed behaviors and they are statistically significantly different than the rest of the, um, than the, rest of the habits. This is interesting as it's not something that you would typically think when doing a survey. When you're out doing like a diving survey, you might think you would see an octopus on the ground crawling or maybe hiding. However, with the camera, there is no human interference, allowing for a lot more natural habits to be exhibited, such as swimming and mating. So here we have a graph showing the different types of species that might interact with an octopus. So this just goes back to what I was talking about, how when they're hunting, there are species that are around the octopus. Um, P. multifasciatus, uh, or the um, many barred goatfish, typically is seen around the octopus the most. Um, when I mean interacting, I mean like they're physically next to an octopus, they're coming up, they're swimming around the coral head looking, and uh, even the octopus is punching them. So this was very interesting to see that P. multifasciatus, uh, the goatfish, was the highest, most statistically significant across the different species. So in conclusion, there was a high number of octopus observations within the winter months which um, resonates well with the um, Olelo Noyao. We have little observations of, across all of the moon phases, sorry, we have little variation in observations across the Hawaiian moon phases. Um, octopus are frequently seen swimming and mating on the camera and interacting with P. multifasciatus the most. Um, and another key takeaway is that the camera is just a unique method to kind of observe 
not only octopus, but many other different species within that um, ecosystem. Uh, it allows for a way to people, for people to observe them in their natural habitat without any interference. For future research, I would like to look into how tides and temperature affect um, octopus behavior um, and, um, sorry, octopus behavior and observation number. I think that these two variables play a large role in that, and I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Um, for broader impacts, I would, uh, this study has created a baseline of data for seasonality of octopus behavior within the Hawaiian Islands. Um, it broadens our understanding of the complex habits between octopus and their natural habitat. And it also gives us a better understanding of the role that octopus play within the coral reef um, ecosystem. So with that being said, I'd like to give a huge mahalo to Dr. Burns, my thesis professors, Kali Pasco, Zach Taylor, everyone at the Mega Lab, the live stream community, uh, Change Hawaii, Kia Halo, and Aqua Link. Questions? does not. Um, so most of the observations are taking during the day. Um, your question was if there are, if there was a night vision um, aspect to the camera. Unfortunately there is not, so most of the observations are taking during the day and then once light is, once light is gone that's all you see is just kind of pitch black. However, the camera does run during these times and it does allow you to see some super cool stuff like um, bioluminescence and other things like that. You just kind of have to be on there to see it. Uh, very interesting. As, so one of the behaviors you saw the most of was mating. Have you looked at whether or not mating occurred seasonally? Um, are there certain times of year when they're mating more or less? So the question was if I had looked at when mating, if there was a seasonal trend to mating, that is not something that I have looked into yet. However, I was planning on doing this. This is my thesis. Um, this is my thesis presentation, and so um, I was planning on looking into that as uh, time goes on. However, I do believe that in the in the graph that I showed with the number of observations across months, you can kind of see like like a divot and a trend in the pattern. Um, let me see if I can go back. Like I don't know if you guys can see this, but in January we have a huge spike, and then we have goes down and goes back up in August followed by September to December, it has that also kind of like trend. So looking into that, we may get some more insight. How do you differentiate the difference between different species or species, like different octopus? So the question was, how do I differentiate between um, individual octopus? Um, it's really difficult and it's not something that I've figured out yet, is my answer. Um, it is, sometimes you can like just tell by the size, but even then you're, you could be making a huge mistake. Octopus, they change color and they can change morphology even. And so this makes it super difficult to determine what individual is what. So the question was, um, being as the camera is stationary, is there a possibility that um, we are only seeing um, habits of octopus moving and um, larger habits uh, because it's harder to see? Is, is, am I right on that? Um, yes, that could be a huge possibility. Uh, the camera does have its limits, and so normally when you're out there on snorkel, you can, actually, you can actually go there and confirm yourself. With the camera, it's difficult because it is mounted. And so depending on where the octopus is in proximity to the camera, it can be really difficult to determine, am I looking at an octopus or am I looking at a fish that just kind of looks funny? And so, yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I struggled with because I would just kind of sit and look at footage for quite a long time. And especially when the dome gets dirty, it can be hard to kind of categorize those observations. And when it does come down to that, usually if there is like a certain amount of doubt, I'll just not add it to not added to the um, data set. Yeah. Was there a bias to this site, or did you just randomly take this? 
So the question was, is there a bias to this site or if I picked it? Um, I chose this site because the camera was mounted there and um, yeah, there, that was just the place that the camera was mounted and so it was just like a great opportunity to choose this method. Um, there, was, there was no bias other than you know, the camera was there. So the question was if I ran any populations of fish to see if there was any correlation with octopus. Yeah, just because you showed the um, correlation of the different species. Yeah. So was there more of those fish in that area and that had any correlation on your interactions So I did not run any population surveys. However, um, when taking this um, and all of the hours that I've spent watching the camera, uh, the goatfish are not, um, I wouldn't say that there are in higher population in respect to any of the other fish here. Um, Z flavescence, the, the yellow tangs, they're in huge amounts on the camera. And so I don't think that um, population number played a role in this, um, in this, in this part of the graph. Uh, however, there have been studies done with this specific camera, other studies than mine, where um, there was take there was taken uh, fish surveys into effect, and, and if this is a viable method for fish surveys. Okay. If there are no other questions, thank you.